Hey guys, what's up? This is Alejandro and Randy right here with Stanley Johnson with Boxing and Basketball. Hey Stanley, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. And yourself? I'm doing great. How about you, Randy? How you been? I'm hanging in there, man. Can't complain. So we have a special guest here, Stanley Johnson. What's up, Stanley? How you doing? Tell me, how's your day been going today? Uh, today was cool. Um, just uh, had a little pool party thing with my friend. Uh, he had like a going away party, so you know, just hung around for a little bit. Um, nothing too major. All right, Stanley. So tell me a little bit. I I I see that you were born in uh in New Orleans, but you live in Houston. How have you lived in Houston all your life, or was it just you were born, or what can you tell me of your past? So uh, uh I moved out here um January 2019. Uh I was in the mm -hmm. military before I moved out here. Uh I was stationed out in Washington for four years. Um was gonna go home when I got out. Um literally everybody I know told me it was a bad idea. So what uh, what branch? I had family out here already, so I just decided to make a move for a uh, new change of scenery, see if I can do something out here. Okay, what, what, what branch of the military? Uh, Navy. Navy? Yeah. Okay. So what about New Orleans? So what could you tell me about New Orleans? So um, fun city. Uh, I feel like it's a very great city to visit not the best city to to live in um not much to do it's, it's smaller than most people think it is uh everybody knows everybody um love love the the food culture everything um family's been there like my whole life um i miss it i go i go home whenever i can uh but as far as uh like opportunities and stuff like that um Houston was a was a better move for me, so I decided to come out here and, and uh, see what what was what was out here for me. Man, it's crazy because uh, I'm I'm from Baton Rouge, right? And so oh, okay. I've been I've been in Texas since 2005. Been in Houston since 2014, and uh, so something that I've noticed over the years is I don't have the accent anymore. And yeah. I know the same with you, man. I, I didn't I didn't catch that. That yeah. New Orleans accent, you know? Yeah, nah, that, that left a long time ago, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually, I went to high school in uh, Kentucky after Katrina. I feel like that's that's when it, it left me. Like, I started getting a little bit of country. A little, it's a little mix of everything now. Nah. Yeah, no, nah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And in New Orleans, is that where you found the boxing? And that's where you started fighting? Or how did, they, uh, how did the love of boxing start? Uh, I went to a gym out there. Um, I didn't really start uh, competing seriously until I moved out here. Um, as far as, like, loving boxing or just really getting into boxing, um, I got into it when I was, like, or I started watching it when I was probably, like, around, like, six or seven. Um, uh, a guy that's pretty much like my uncle, he uh, put me on. He was watching, like, a, a old-school Tommy Hearns fight. And um, I kind of just like the way he moved. I always been into like like any type of martial arts, any type of fighting stuff like that. Um, but I just I kind of gravitated towards like people that just use their hands. Like I, I just really like like the aspect of only using your hands when you fight. And I saw uh, some some Tommy Hearns and uh, Roy Jones uh, videos. My uncle used to always show me, and I kind of got like real. Uh, hooked on just watching the highlights over and over again. Then I just started watching more boxing and, and kind of got deep into it. I really didn't hop into a gym until like I was like 20. Um, and then I didn't compete until uh, 24, 25. And uh, what was the first gym that you actually started going to and just started like saying like, oh, damn, this is something I want to do? Uh, it was Power MMA, Power Boxing and MMA in Terrytown, um, Louisiana. Uh, I actually went in there. Um, I took like some MMA classes first, uh, some kickboxing classes. Um, cause I the the way my schedule was, I couldn't do the boxing. Um, one of the boxing coaches there like was telling me, "Hey man, you should come check out the boxing." 
um, kind of switched my schedule around, went to boxing, and then just like really fell in love with actually training. And uh, I just kept going back. Um, I competed in like a little, it was like an exhibition basically, um, but uh, it wasn't nothing major until um, I got out and moved out here. Then I really decided like I wanted to to compete to go hard on like hard 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 with it and just go crazy with it. So you mentioned exhibition. Uh, were you talking about in the Navy? Nah, that was uh, right before. So right before I joined, um, like literally the month before I joined, my recruiter probably would have been pissed if he heard it. But like right before, like a month before I joined, um, I went and uh, did a, a little exhibition out in um, Mississippi. Uh, it was like spring Mississippi or something like that. Um, and I just uh, did a competition out there. Um it was uh it was just like regular USA boxing um match, just a small little exhibition. Uh did that, then I joined the military and I thought I could like compete in, in um and fight while I was in the Navy, but they disbanded the Navy team like the year right before I joined. Oh wow. Um, so I couldn't do like I there was like a kickboxing gym near my base. Uh and I, I went there a few times, but like I couldn't really get into boxing until I got out. I was I had that itch the whole time. So every time there was like bags or something, I'm just hitting the bags, trying to uh, learn or work on whatever I knew at the time. Um, but there was no actual gyms around around the area I was at in Washington. Wow. Okay. So when at what age did you before like the boxing? Did you play any other sports or any yeah. any other stuff? I was a football player basically my whole life. Um, played football since uh, like the little Pee Wee leagues all the way up until um, college. I played like one year at the NAIA school out in Kentucky. Um, then I uh, moved back home and that's when I kind of decided I wanted to join the military and uh, kind of just get a little stability because um, I was just working like you know, little side jobs back home, wasn't doing much, didn't really have direction back home, but played football mm -hmm. like my whole life. Wow. All right. What position did you play? I uh, played DE, then I played uh, outside linebacker in college. Nice. So then after, after high school, you decided to go to the Navy. Yeah. And how was that? Did you get deployed anywhere or were you always here in the States? No, nah, I, I got deployed to a lot of places. Uh, Japan, uh, I was on the boat for about, I was on like two back-to-back -back deployments on the boat. So I spent probably like uh, about eight months on the boat. Um, and we went to like France, England, uh, Norway, um, Greece, Spain. It was a lot of places. Uh, Japan was probably where I spent the longest, um, the south of Japan on the Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. So and, that, and how was that experience going to like, uh, Japan and all that? Japan was amazing. Um, super. It was, that was probably my favorite. Um, I'm a huge geek, so uh, Japan was like a like a wonderland for me out there. Um, uh, the the boat wasn't the best experience, but when we went to different um, countries, that was always a great time. Uh, but uh, the actual boat deployment was not the the best. It was. A little bit of a little rough one. Yeah. And when you were in Japan, did you do any boxing or anything like that? Nah, I just worked out. Um, hit hit the bags. Uh, never like train like never trained officially. Just bag work. Um, working on what I thought I knew was correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, just just ain't like uh, messing around with with my friends every now and then, you know, with like little light spar and stuff like that, but nothing serious. All right, Ken. So once you left Japan and it became serious, what was like the first thing that you decided? Like, you know what, I want to go amateur. Um. So it was my last deployment. I was on the boat. Um. I had a lot of time to kind of just like sit back and take notes and write down like what I really wanted to do because I knew I wasn't gonna stay in the military. So I was on like my last like six months in in on my contract. So kind of wrote down a whole list of like 
because I, I everything I wanted to do was revolved around boxing. I knew I wanted to compete. Like I, I was watching it, and I just I, every day it was just me thinking like, what can I do to compete? How can I compete? How can I get into this? Um, uh, when I started writing everything down, I was like, the first thing I'm gonna do um, when I get out is find a boxing gym. Um, I planned on going home, but after I talked to my dad and a couple friends and stuff, everybody directed me to go to Houston. Um, moved out here. Uh, I moved out here um, in December, like right before Christmas, like December 23rd, um, January 3rd, I was uh, at uh, Paradigm, the boxing gym I'm at now. Uh, and I literally just Googled boxing gym, <laughs> boxing gyms in Houston, and uh, <laughs> went to whatever I thought would look the best. My, my plan was just to shop around and see um, – like what I liked and uh, if I liked the gym or not, if I liked the coach. Uh, I met my coach now, um, and I and I, me and him just clicked immediately. I just liked the way he was running his class and the way he talked to uh, his fighters, and it, it, it kind of resonated with me. So I, I just like, you know what, I'm going to stick around and see how he works. And it's been music ever since. We've been, we've been handling business the whole time. That's what's up, yeah. And so, so how many amateur fights do you have? Because I, I saw some on um uh, on your box rack, but I'm sure you had more than that. Uh, all together, so I had 27, 27 amateur fights. Yeah, that's 27. Good. And and how was your first experience when you when you went on your first amateur fight? Um, it was fast way faster than I than I was expecting. Like it was like a blur. Um you know you're fighting for a minute in those those newcomer or those novice rounds. Uh I I was I was in really good shape. Uh kind of changed like my whole lifestyle around to get ready for the fight. Um I ended up losing the fight. Like I not, I knocked the guy down in the third round. I, I that was when I realized okay amateur and pro is different um knocked the guy in the third round we had a close little fight um knocked him down in the third round i thought that was like it was me solidifying my win then after after i i lost and i and coach kind of broke it down to me like why i lost because like you know i wasn't punching enough i wasn't as aggressive the other the earlier rounds so i was lose. i lost on points and all that and i started like once i lost that way i started uh going into the rules and kind of really real like really trying to find out like what what amateur like what they look for in the amateur how like the difference between amateur boxing and pro boxing how they score things uh i kind of went in not blind but uh i guess ignorant on the fact like uh that i need to be score trying to score solid blows and not trying to knock my guy out every time like this is it's not it's a it's a different it's it's amateurs it's not pros i don't need to go in there and put the guy out i need to go score and show that i can box so mm -hmm. it was it was like i lost but it was a humbling experience and uh and i it was probably for the best because uh just went crazy after that in the gym or went when <laughs> ran the next day i was like yeah i can't let this happen again and you know just picked it up and uh and was ready for the next one. That's what's mm, up. And how did the next one go? Good. Knock the guy out of the first round. In the next oh, good. oh, nice. Yeah. You didn't waste any time, man. <laughs> I had to get him out of there that time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you said you had 27 amateur fights. Yeah. Uh, over how many years have you had those fights happen? Uh, This is my fourth year. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, over four years. Um. COVID kind of knocked out a lot. Uh, I, I think I met, I fought twice um, during all the COVID time. Uh, but um, last year was, was probably my busiest year. I fought 12 times last year. Um, okay. And before that, it was just me trying to find fights. It was kind it was real hard for me to find fights until I got open. Um, then I could just start going to all the national tournaments and stuff like that and getting fights. But uh the, the first two years was just iffy just because we were trying to find fights. I, I kept having, like, a lot of uh, guys back out, like, the day before, day of, stuff like that. You know how amateur boxing is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the last two years have been, like, really busy. Um, and I managed to get, like, a lot of fights and uh, went to a bunch of tournaments. So mo most of your fights have been in Texas or in the South or all over? Um, uh, been all over. Um. 
so uh most have been in the south um so uh yeah a lot have been in the south because i've been to like a lot of like the qualifiers and they're usually like in texas and stuff like that um i went to national golden gloves that was in oklahoma last year um and then i went to the brampton cup out in canada last year too and um that was that was a really good experience as well we got got to do a little international thing um got to meet some people out there and uh uh see how um you know they boxed out in canada it was real nice real fun they they were real nice for us up there um me and one of my other teammates went up there and um went to that tournament we both won uh but it was that was a really good experience. Then the fought in um with Vegas. Uh we were supposed to fight in Cali, but uh that that tournament didn't happen for some reason. I can't remember. But yeah, most of my fights was like Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, the golf basically. Gotcha. Uh one of our other co hosts just was able to join. His name is Jonathan, and uh, I gotta just tell him to unmute his his microphone. So, so you've been in the you've been in the fighting the amateurs twenty seven fights and uh, so in boxing, I done a little boxing myself. What was the hardest thing like for me was just the defense part. It's it's I I try and try and it, it's hard because you know everybody knows how to throw punches, but the defense part it was always the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. Got much better, but what was the hardest thing for you to learn? Um, honestly, the hardest thing wasn't even like, uh, in the gym, it was, it was discipline in the kitchen. Uh, I'm from the South, you know, <laughs> uh, my family, my, half my family from Mississippi, the other half from Louisiana, they cook with, with lard and, and everything, you know, it, every, everything's big and hearty. So it, it, it me kind of changing my lifestyle around and start eating healthier and avoiding a lot of stuff, um, going to... Thanksgiving and these holidays and not digging in that was that was the the hardest part the entire time like making the weight uh um and yeah just being disciplined with the diet the entire time that, that was that was all new to me um I'm used to you know I used I played football my whole life they tell you the opposite they tell you to eat everything you know you gotta you gotta get big so just keep eating keep eating now I, now I got everybody telling me hey don't watch that don't eat that don't eat that don't eat that and that that was hard that was super hard to to get used to so it was more like, of a food yeah yeah do you feel like you're in a position where you have that part under control now oh absolutely um i've had i've had like a, a dietitian for um some of my uh camps getting ready for some of the tournaments and stuff um learned a lot about food uh just um nutrition in general um taught myself taught, uh, uh listened to my trainer as well um took notes every time we had meetings and everything uh tried to really learn why like i eat certain things why i should avoid certain things why i should um eat at certain times stuff like that um really really took that part of the game serious so i wouldn't have issues missing weight or just struggling trying to get to to the weight Right, right. I know being in the military, man, you should have had somewhat of an idea of how to eat right, because that's something that they teach us, teach us in basic, right? Like, mm -hmm. how to eat certain meals and only eating three times a day. But yeah, yeah. that that definitely um that that was that helped uh and and being on the boat kind of made me used to eating certain things like all the time, like one specific thing every day or whatever. So uh. It definitely made it easier for me, excuse me, um, to avoid certain things because it was like, okay, I don't, I know I've been eating this all day, or if I can just eat this for all week, I'll be fine. So it was a lot easier to do stuff like that, um, uh, and then just avoiding it because uh, there was times when the military was, you know, I got, I got a PT test coming up or whatever, so I got to make sure I'm not eating this or I'm getting ready for this. So um, the discipline part. Uh, helped a lot. Yeah, that that's something that I think you would have over a lot of other fighters. Is a discipline point, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially coming, you know, coming from the military, that's something that they teach us. And because I'm prior uh, service myself, I did four okay. years in the army. So okay. yeah, yeah, definitely that discipline point, man, would definitely help you out. For sure. 
for sure. It was that that, that that's definitely an edge. Um, because I, I see guys now all the time. Uh, like the the diet gets them. They lose the fight before they get to the ring because of the, the diets or not running and stuff like that. The the discipline from the military kind of really just like even if I didn't want to do it, I'm like, yo, I gotta go get it done at least. Got to gotta do something. Can't just sit here, be lazy, or can't can can't skip this run. Can't skip this. Like I gotta handle business, so and make the fight easier. Yeah, and uh, Jonathan had a question for you, Stanley. Go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah, Stan. I got two questions, man. Uh, if you can hear me, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Uh, if you hear any static or anything like that, I'll, I'm almost done driving. I just had to go somewhere. It's very important. So the first question, man. You mentioned your first fight how you took like a loss because you weren't being aggressive enough or your coach was telling you, Hey, you know, you need to throw more punches and you knocked him down a third round and you were like, okay, well clearly I won the fight. You know, I just knocked him down, but you ended up losing. How did that affect your psychology going into the next fight? I know you say you knocked the guy out and it was, you know, it was like a layup, but how did that affect you as far as like your perception of like your own skill? Like, were you able to just bounce back or did it take you some time to kind of just like get over what happened? Um, I definitely was down because uh, it was kind of like I felt like I was this was like a build up for years because the whole time I was in the military, I was like, I got I want to fight. I want to fight. I want to fight. And, you know, like, yeah. it was a really big deal for me. Um, And then I f finally got the fight and I lost that. That definitely hurt. Um, But uh, like I was saying earlier, it kind of just just humbled me and made me realize like yo we just gotta go harder like we can sit and cry about it but that ain't gonna do nothing so uh let myself be sad about it for the night next morning i'm up stretching getting ready to run um and getting ready for the next fight so it 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 kind of I, I feel like that was the best thing to happen to me because i needed it i just needed like another focus to know like hey well, what i was doing wasn't enough um and, and it made me learn more about the sport itself instead of just thinking okay i just need to fight i just need to do this like no i need to understand the rules what's going on what the judges are looking for what what um what 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 wins fights in amateur boxing so uh I really I went back. I started watching like old national tournaments and stuff like that. Um, when you watch old uh, Golden Gloves, you see them boxing Golden Gloves championships just to see you know what these guys were doing when they won and what the difference was. And um, yeah. then I got back with my coach and was like, yeah, we need to you know pick up the punch count. We need to do this, do that. Made a lot of adjustments and it, it really helped my game. So uh, like the next next couple fights was, was just me uh, getting them guys out there. I had like two first round knockouts in a row um, and I was on a good little little run so it, 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 I needed that loss honestly. That's good man. The next question I have for you before I turn it back over to them is you mentioned like uh, you know being in the military so you have like a more discipline than other people. Um, I was in the military for some time as well and because I was in the military I hate running. And there's no amount of discipline that somebody can give me to make me want to run. I won't do it. So my question for you is, as a boxer, I know running is a big part of the game, not just for cardio, but so you can last in the longer rounds. Mm -hmm. How has your experience in the military, like, shaped your, I guess, attitude towards running? I, only people in the military understand what I'm talking about. Do you still run? Yeah, um, definitely, definitely run. Uh, it. I got. I hate it too. I won't sit here and be like, "Yeah, man, I, I'm gonna get up and go oh, yeah. knock my mouth oh, out." Yeah. I, running, running disgusts me. I hate cardio in general. But I there know we I, go. That's the you truth. Need, <laughs> you, you need it for this sport. Um, but uh, if I, I won't say the military helped me out with the cardio. If I'll be honest, what helped me out the most with the cardio was uh, I, I took probably one of the worst beatings ever in a sparring session in the gym oh, against, oh. against a guy that uh, that technically, like skill wise, I was way better than him. I just was like the first the first round that we were sparring. I'm like styling on. I'm looking good. I'm enjoying myself. You know, having a great time. Got tired in the second round, and it just turned out to be him just beat me up for the next two or three rounds and I was like okay I right, that's not happening again I, I need to go run I need to make sure I'm in shape um I need to handle my business because I, I can't lose because I'm tired I, I that was the one the one rule I gave myself I was like they gotta beat me up they gotta earn it. I can't lose just because I got tired 
That's good, man. Uh, I'm 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 glad that you were able to at least you know take away the the mental fortitude aspect and apply it in that direction. I mean, mm-hmm. especially coming off a loss, that's one of the hardest things for people that get into any kind of combat sport is that first loss yeah. and just being able to overcome that and then get back in there and say, I'm not going to let this define the rest of my career. So the fact that, you know, you went all along and had like 20 plus more fights, I think that's very impressive that you never slowed down. 12 fights in a year is also incredibly impressive. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. By the way, guys, if I lose you, I'm going into a parking garage. So that's a heads up. No problem. So, hey, Sandy, have you been in, in any type of tournaments or anything like that? Uh, like this year or just in general? Just just in general, yeah. Yeah, I've um, been in a lot of tournaments. Uh, uh, I was in Golden – so four regional Golden Gloves tournaments, um, two state Golden Glove tournaments, uh, went to nationals the national qualifiers twice and the national golden gloves uh once and the brampton cup that's canada's national provisional provisional uh tournament so um mm-hmm. yeah i've been in a lot of tournaments oh and uh sugar Burt. been in like three of the sugar Burt tournaments um oh, so shit. most most of my most of my fights are uh, usually in tournaments gotcha and and you do you, when when are you gonna go pro uh, so I, I went pro around June, uh, I mean, I, yeah, uh, was it June? Man, I'm, now I'm messed up. Uh, uh, June, I went pro in, in June, um, mm-hmm. on the PCS card, uh, PCS uh-huh. three. Uh, I had made my pro, pro debut, uh, fought this guy, Larry Pryor, um, uh-huh. uh, stopped him in the third round. Mm-hmm. So you have one pro fight? Yes. Okay. And and they, is there any any set day for your next fight? Yeah, so I was supposed to fight last month in New Jersey um, on the Joe Frazier Jr. card, but I uh, injured my my right knuckle. I dislocated mm-hmm. my right knuckle. I didn't know it was a thing, um, but I dislocated my right knuckle uh, uh, in a sparring session, like right before. So we had to pull out. Um, I got. I'm getting. I'm supposed to be cleared to fight like mid October. Uh, so whenever the doctor says I'm cleared, um, hopefully uh, I can fight in November because I've been training still. I've like I've just been using my other hand, um, still in shape. So whatever comes up, for sure I have a fight um, December second, uh, PCS four. That's uh, going to be at the Red Owl, um, the Red Owl uh, Boxing Center. Uh, I'm not really sure. It's in, mm-hmm. it's in Houston. In Houston. Okay. Hmm. Randy Parking yeah. Oh, there you go. So yeah, no, I, I was saying I never heard of the Red Owl, but uh I'll definitely find out for the night this over with. Yeah, it's a uh, PCS and um uh next fight up are supposed to be co-promoting that. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a question for you. So you had your first uh professional bout in mm-hmm. June. Um did you perform the way you expected to perform? Um, I did. Uh, well, as far as uh, I, you know, defensively, yes, I performed exactly the way I thought I was gonna perform defensively. Didn't take damage. Um, uh, made him miss a lot of shots. Caught a lot of shots. Um, the only thing offensively, I was the that I would say me personally. Um, I felt like I was a little gun shy. Um, like I, I was landing shots. I was aggressive. Um. And I was throwing a lot of shots, but I wasn't throwing a lot of shots with with conviction. Um, going back, watching the tapes, I could see it. I'm like, I should have should have been ripping shots here, ripping shots there. You know, I wasn't really um, putting a lot behind it. I was, I was, I, I played it too safe. Um, and I, I and uh, we can we can blame that on nerves or whatever. But I definitely played it too safe. Um, definitely wish it would have went better. Um, I didn't like the finish. They kind of stopped it in a in a weird way. Um, wasn't a fan of that. Uh, wanted wanted to put on a show for everybody, um, but uh, as far as showing my boxing skills, I believe I I showed uh, technically um, that, that I'm a I was a, a I'm a solid boxer. Um, defensively, I showed I was I was great defensively that that fight, uh, but I could have been um, way more aggressive offensively. Okay. 
Hey, Stan, one quick comment I just want to make. Um, your, you said you have your next fight's when again? Uh, December 2nd. December 2nd? Okay. What is your, what's your next goal from there? So say you win that match, right? Are you just trying to train and get more amateur fights underneath your belt? Or are you aiming to, like, what are you aiming towards before actually going to that next step? Um, well, so, so the, the, that next fight is a, is my, is my second, um, pro fight. So the, the goal is to climb the rankings, um, and keep fighting until, uh, I can, I can get a title shot, fight, fight a major opponent. Um, right now I'm just, I'm just trying to fight. Uh, we, we sent out, you know, um, uh, offers to go fight in other spots, uh, been a little hard finding fights um that's I'm, I'm kind of finding out that side of the game right now so the the business side of the game is a little iffy right now but the goal the goal at the end of the day is is to to win keep winning keep getting better and make my way to the top just keep climbing these rankings and be at the top awesome man well from my end uh i'm interested in you and your career so i'm gonna try to find out more information about you and your instagram and everything else uh Appreciate that. The call um right now i have to go but i will be on the lookout for both you and what you're doing in the future and also your career um good luck to you in the meantime my friend and Thank uh, thanks for coming on the call appreciate you thank you so much no problem brother thank you you have a good night you too all righty yeah he had a photo shoot so it was like last minute but we told him to jump in so he could uh, get to meet you and be part of the conversation and interview. Got it. So, Stanley, um, now that besides boxing, what uh, what other stuff do you like to do, like for fun, when when you're not doing any boxing? Um. So, uh, like I said earlier, I'm a huge geek. So I'm I'm a gamer. Uh, play a lot <laughs> of video games. Uh. I'm into uh, comics. I, I read a lot of comic books. Like I got a, a trunk in my closet right now full of comics um, that I haven't unpacked yet. Uh, nice. Like, I'm a I'm a huge geek. Um, outside of you know playing video games, reading comics, I cook. Um, I like to cook a lot. Uh, I the weekends um, when I'm outside of camp, I like to cook some pretty unhealthy stuff, so I enjoy myself. <laughs> um, uh, Really, really big fan of cooking, and then I just chill with my dog. Don't do much. Um, I don't go out as much. Uh, definitely not a social butterfly. Um, I chill a lot once. Um, and uh, outside of uh, just competing, um, I I train too. Uh, I coach the youth boxing team at my gym. So oh nice. Um, I've been on the other side of, of boxing uh, lately. So that's been uh an experience um had some of the kids fight uh so that's that's kind of that kind of um not saying i was losing my uh love for the sport but it just re reinvigorated it because i'm just like mm -hmm. like it, i seeing somebody else um you know uh prosper from the sport like just makes me feel good watching uh watching the kids i talk to them you know but we, we uh joke around all the time and like like i I see they they go through some of the same things I was going through as an amateur and seeing them uh, get through it and then get in the ring and handle their business, you know, it just makes me like real proud. So um been taking like that was something I didn't think I was going to love as much because uh, my gym let me uh, they, they let me become a youth. Uh, one of the coaches of the youth boxing team. So I, um, mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to like it. Um, uh, never been. Um, the the biggest uh like kid guy like um like like uh, you know all my little cousins and stuff love me but like never never thought i'd be the one to be like teaching kids anything honestly um but ended up loving it it's like my second year as a coach um and nice. like i i love it uh like if i'm not so if i'm not fighting or if i'm not competing or training i'm training somebody else does it make you want to have kids man Ooh, that's a whole nother story, man. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, it, it pushes me the complete other way. I'm like, you know what? I'm good with y'all for about two hours. Y'all go back to your parents. Uh, but I mean, I'm I'm open to it, you know. It's, especially seeing them really enjoy it, you know. Uh, 
uh, like, and, and getting to know him um, definitely, like, gives me mixed feelings. So I'm yeah. still in the middle. I don't know yet, but but maybe. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So I don't, you said I don't, you, 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 go ahead. No, I'll say I didn't go know ahead, Randy. Alejandro had asked you this, but uh, what weight class are you fighting in? Uh, right now, I'm cruise, I'm fighting at cruiser, uh, 200 pounds. Um, when I was an amateur, I fought at uh, 176, 189, and 203. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, and how tall are you? Uh, six one. Okay, so, so okay, cool, 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 cool. So, fighting cruiser weight, where do you see yourself? Three at least three years from now, what do you plan to take this take the sport? Three years from now, um, hopefully, uh, I'm um, I'm cracking the, the top ten in this uh, in this division. Um, the goal is to is to to keep fighting. Uh, after my first fight, um, I bumped up to uh, to thirty, I believe. Um, yeah, and the main, and just in the in the states, I bumped up to thirty. So. Okay. Uh, the goal is to to get Keep number going. one in the states, knock that out, and then push forward and, and go overseas and and try to take some of these guys' rankings because the best guys in my division are all like Europeans or um just just overseas. So the the goal right now for the next three years is to is to fight as much as I can, get as much experience as I can, and keep climbing the ladder. Um, uh, if if title opportunities present itself we'll, we'll gladly take it but um i'm not i'm in no rush to to push myself um up the rankings as far but i, I the the goal is to fight top ranked guys and just keep fighting higher ranked guys to to keep climbing up this rankings um in a in a smart way okay that's what's up and is that like the way you want to fight at cruiser way to stay there uh, for now, yeah. Um, the goal is to eventually bump up to to heavy. Uh, but for now, um, is I'm gonna stay at cruiser. Definitely gonna stay at cruiser for probably the next few years. Um, try to make my make a name for myself at this weight class, and then eventually bump up. All right. And you, I wanted to ask you. You said you love to cook. What's your favorite dish to cook? Uh, my favorite dish to cook. Um, so. I, my my mom messed up and gave me the gumbo recipe about four <laughs> years ago. So anytime I'm trying to impress somebody, uh, like the like gumbo is like a like if it's like a group session type of thing, I'm trying to make some gumbo impress everybody. But if it's just like a little um, me thing, just trying to enjoy some food, uh, I make stuffed salmon, and that's like my my go to. Stuffed salmon with, with some uh, some veggies on the side, like I, I'll right. destroy that. So I I gotta ask you, Ben, that I'm from Louisiana. Yeah, do you make your own roux? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Can't skip no steps, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got they sell them in the stores now. You they do. Them. I see them. You know, I I gotta look right past them. I gotta be a guy with blind eye to them. I can't skip no steps, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Okay. You might know. You might know what you're doing. You might. You might know a little something. Then. I might. I might. Look, next time y'all have a have a uh, a boxing and basketball get together. Let, let me know. I'm gonna make the gumbo. I got y'all. Hey, that, oh. listen. I'll be the one to call you, dude. Like, hey, man, <laughs> we need that gumbo. Got Every time I go to New Orleans, I, I love New Orleans. Uh, I've been there a couple times, but the food, the gumbo, I love everything yeah. about it, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you got any anything else, Randy? Yeah, man. How um, I was gonna ask, how can people follow you? Do you have Instagram, Facebook? You know, how can yeah. you- um, so I'm on I'm on uh IG. That's where uh I spend the most of my my social uh, media time. Uh, it's it's Kid Muscle with a with a one instead of an I. Um, okay. I, I spend majority of my time on IG. That's where I put like a lot of my my content, my videos, and everything. Um, guess if you want a, a feel of my my personality, that's that's where the best place to go. Got a Facebook too, uh, just Stanley Johnson. Um, uh, this one right here. Yep, right? that's it. That's it. Okay, right, I'll follow you right now. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so- but yeah, that's that's where you'll you'll get you'll get the most of uh, if you want to know who I am, how how I 
go about my daily daily life, that's that's probably your best bet. Follow me on IG. Um, yeah, I spend most of my time on there. I got a TikTok, same same name, but I, I don't put I don't post enough on there. Bad, bad. All right, sorry. Two more questions, man. Real yeah. quick. No problem. Right, so, uh, Errol Spence is supposed to do a rematch with Terrence Crawford. At least that's what he's pushing for. Mm-hmm. What do you? Uh, what is your prediction in his second bout? I I don't see much of a difference, especially because uh, because um, if I if I read correctly, they was trying to have that fight like like beginning of the year next year, right? Um, I, December. Oh, They're trying to do December. Oh, December? Well, yeah. I, I just don't see um, that being enough time to make the proper adjustments to to counter anything that that Crawford brought to the table because even I know since they, they're trying to go up to, to 54 I don't I don't think that's going to be much of a difference I feel like that's going to help Crawford even more too going up um I, I I see more of the same um I don't I don't think it'll be as one-sided as it was but I don't see Arrow making enough adjustments to to change yeah. the game with within that short amount of time I agree with you I agree. And my third question is, uh, who do you predict the win in the Jamel, uh, Charlo, uh, or Canelo Alvarez uh, fight? Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna say I, I'm going with Canelo, but I'm, I'm not gonna say it too loud because it's a lot of. Uh, I mean, Houston. I, don't, I ain't trying. I'm trying to make it home safe, so I'm. I'm, gonna say, <laughs> I'm, I'm going. I'm going with. I'm going with Canelo though. I, I see Canelo winning that. Bad. Bad. Okay. That's interesting. So what, what about Sandy, you? What, what, you, what, what y'all got for, for that one? Uh, I don't know, man. That's a tough one, man. It, it really is tough, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm know, somewhere I, between. I personally think it's going to be a closer fight than a lot of people think. Yeah, I, I, um, I agree. Jermel, uh, he's a big dude. I, I got to meet him. Uh, I met him a couple of times, and recently we they were here in uh, Los Angeles, and I went to the press conference. And he's a big dude. And the longest, if he comes in at 168, I'm, I don't think it's going to help him and he's going to be slow. But if he comes in like around 162, 163 mm-hmm. and try to be that lean 154 fighter, I think he's going to bring a lot of problems. The Canelo's a small, small, small guy. Like he fights big dudes, but if when you meet him, you're going to be like, damn, that's Canelo. He's like he's <laughs> tiny. Yeah. And he's not a big dude. He just he just broad, like he's stocky and stuff. Mm-hmm. But other than that, he's not big. And he's not he just has a big neck. That's it. Yep. That's the only thing that I see from him. And uh just big uh, shoulders and back. But I think if Jamal uses his distance and boxes Canelo and doesn't get into a fire fight. I think he has a good chance of at least putting up a good fight because Canelo, since the Ryder fight, I know he's been saying that he's been injured and this and that, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think since he's been in a lot of wars and he's still young, but just all those wars are catching up to him. Yep, I, and, I agree. And he needs to, if he beats Jamal quick, he needs to fight Benavides next to he cannot afford to go into another war with anybody else if not he needs to just pretty soon in the next couple of fights retire in my opinion and for the Crawford and Spence fight I just don't want to see that fight again it was just <laughs> I, I'd rather see him fight uh, I'd rather see Crawford fight Tim Su or even Spence fight Tim Su I think that would be a good idea have Spence fight Tim Su and if Spence beats him then Crawford fights him for a belt and then they fight your mouth that I think that's the best way, the best game plan. A big part of me wants to see Spence uh, redeem himself, even if he doesn't win the sec, the rematch. Man, at least, at least put up a, a decent fight. Yeah, yeah, make it the fight everybody thought it was going to be. Right, because he 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 Crawford beat him like he was a scrub, man. Yeah, yeah. Like showed, he showed, showed his levels to this game, man. That was that was impressive. I I feel like the whole the whole world was shook that night. Mm-hmm. Couldn't sleep that night, man. <laughs> the, couldn't sleep. I was lucky. I was lucky enough to go to that fight, and I was just oh, stunned when it was going on. I'm like, "Yeah, what's 
we want to. But I've been I've been following Crawford since ooh, since I've been lucky enough to see him become undisputed twice, and I I used to go to Omaha to watch him fight. Okay, he's been one of my favorite fighters for a long, long time. And yeah, me personally, I'm awesome. happy that he's finally getting his recognition and getting his money he deserves. Yeah, yeah, he's he's getting all the love now. Uh, I feel like yeah. it's, it's been long overdue, but uh, mm-hmm. glad, yeah, glad to see everybody everybody um putting him putting him on his pedestal now where he where yeah. he belongs. Yeah. So, other than that, Sandy, just you gave us your IG and everything. Just keep in touch and uh, let us. Once it gets closer to your fight night, fight day, let us know. Send us okay. some videos so we can put them up on the okay. website. And we want to keep up with your career and all that. So cool. whatever you need, we we're together now on Instagram. I followed you. Got so you. I'll follow you back. Send me videos, and I'm more than happy to repost them. Hey, all yeah, right. you'll probably see me, or, me or Jonathan, man, there. And you know, so we might pop up to just throw a camera in your face for a quick interview. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there you go. Okay, I love that. Yeah, all right. Sure, well, man. I, I appreciate y'all for having me on here, man. It means a lot, man. Thank y'all for taking the time out to, to listen to me. Hey, thank you for no, joining us. Thank man. you, man. Thank you for joining us. All right. Well, this is the wrap. Thank you, Stanley. Right. Thank you, Randy. And uh don't forget December 2nd, right? That's yes, the, sir. your next fight. So Keep, we'll keep up on the website and we'll be updating you about Stanley's career. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.